Um, so guys, today, what we're going to talk about is uh, uh, Microsoft Cloud uh, tenants and subscriptions. And the reason we're doing that is because I just think that there's a lot of confusion out there. So I, uh, I looked Michael Lord up. You know, he's he's the know all be all guru of all things Azure. He's probably going to dispute that in just a second, but he is. And uh, so uh, I asked him if he would do this for us. And that's what we're going to do today. So, Mike, um, thank you for doing this, man. Oh, absolutely. So once again, my name is Michael Lord and I'm a technical uh, specialist for security and compliance. And we will just dive right into it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about what is an Azure enrollment. So an Azure enrollment is a billing and cost management structure for our enterprise agreement customers. So if you have an enterprise agreement with Microsoft, you can sign up for an Azure enrollment and that becomes a contractual boundary for billing. And it's managed through its own portal and it has its own set of permissions for cost management associated with an enterprise agreement. If you don't have an enterprise agreement, you can still get Microsoft Azure. It just goes through a different structure. Now, when you go on to the next level, you have something called a subscription. So what is a subscription? So a subscription is this concept of creating these separate billing and management boundaries. So when you have an, an enrollment, you can have multiple subscriptions below them. And those multiple subscriptions allow you to configure and otherwise manage the resources inside of those subscriptions separately. Those are managed through the main Azure portal, but also start extending into other Microsoft products like Office 365 and Dynamics 365. Ultimately, when you start pulling in subscriptions, you start having discussions about logical security boundaries, identity boundaries, and assignments of roles within them. Hey, Mike, let me ask you a quick question. So sure. what you're saying is that everything kind of fits in under the enrollment. Well, that's if you're an enterprise agreement customer. If you decide to have a pay-as-you-go credit card, you would go directly to the subscription level. Ah, okay, so that makes sense. And the enrollment encompasses both Office 365 and Azure, is that correct? So the, the enrollment encompasses just Azure. There are separate agreements that go on with our, our software as a service offerings that are also on an enterprise agreement. However, that does not result in the creation of an Azure subscription. So, or I should say an Azure enrollment. So as you look at this, ultimately what happens is the enterprise agreement for an Azure enrollment is that concept of being able to get bill for what you consume, whereas subscriptions are the next level of creating these billing and management boundaries that could potentially have separate man billing structures, separate management structures. So the only time you ever see an enrollment is when you have Azure pay uh, an Azure subscription that is ultimately rolling up to an enterprise agreement that is a structure of paying for your product as you consume it, as opposed to a pay-as-you-go credit card structure. Ah, I understand. So if I'm an organization, I go to Microsoft, I I purchase uh, uh, an enrollment, an Azure enrollment, but I've got maybe two or three divisions and each of those divisions, you know, they need to be responsible for what they use in Azure. So I could create a subscription for each division and then that would be a separate um, billing entity and, and identity entity as well. Correct. And it would be the same kind of parallel if you have a contract and then you with a with anyone and then you have separate task orders inside of that contract. So those individual task orders can be managed separately. They can have separate terms and conditions. They can have separate billing and billing line items where ultimately it's rolling up to a master contract. And effectively, that is what an enrollment is, is a master contract. Understand. Now, once you move on past the subscription where you have the ability to get separate bills, each subscription in Azure could get a separate bill. An Office 365 subscription could have separate bills. Dynamics 365 subscriptions could have separate bills. So now we start talking about what is a tenant. Well, the tenant model within the Microsoft Cloud is very similar to what you see with apartments and apartment complexes. 
So an apartment complex in and of itself is akin to, in this slide, an Office 365 data center. However, it could be any sort of, of data center, any sort of product within the Microsoft Cloud. And much as you have different apartments inside an apartment complex, you have different tenants inside of the Microsoft Cloud. And within those tenants, you can have subscriptions, you can have domains, you can have groups, you can have users, all within that tenant. So a tenant becomes a logical security construct to allow you to start assigning different things like roles and security around that. And multiple subscriptions can tie to a tenant. So okay, so I can have multiple subscriptions, uh, but I may, uh, but I don't. There's not a one-to-one -one mapping between subscriptions and tenants. Well, there can be a one-to-one -one mapping, or there can be many subscriptions mapped to one tenant. I got it. Okay. So at a minimum, there's one-to-one -one at a max, you know, and then there's one-to-many. I got it. Okay, thanks. So let's talk about how that links to an identity and talk about it in a, in a, in a more logical manner. So you have these software as a service uh, uh, subscriptions for Office 365, for Dynamics 365. You have separate subscriptions around your pa Azure PaaS platform as a service applications. You potentially have virtual machines running in Azure infrastructure as a service under potentially different subscriptions. Well, you can tie them all together to the same identity provider, the Azure Active Directory tenant. So that means that you are providing single sign-on and the same username and password is used to access all the services. However, because you are providing a single identity store and each one of these things is a separate uh, subscription, you can manage roles and security roles differently amongst them all. So you're using the same username and password, but that just because you can access Office 365 for email doesn't mean that you are given permission to access virtual machines and an Azure infrastructure as a service environment. Makes sense. So when we really drive that down and look at it at a much deeper level, you have the ability within that Azure Active Directory tenant to link enterprise groups and users across different management groups, under different resource groups, and different types of privileged roles, as well as user roles, and then determine which subscriptions you want them to be able to manage across those resources. A subscription is gonna map back to billing, and then a tenant is gonna map back to individual resources that generate billing. So the linkage there is that you have the objects in the tenant and those objects generate billing and the billing goes back to a subscription. Yep. So that pretty much wraps up how all of that fits together across your enrollment, down to your potentially many subscriptions, down to potentially many or one tenant. Well, Mike, that makes things a lot clearer. I really appreciate you doing that for us. Absolutely. All right, guys. Well. That's all we have for today, so that's your taste of Premiere.